Now at 537, two men are in jail this morning, including an up-and-coming Florida rapper. Both men are charged in a double <laughs> Police are saying the two staged a crime scene to make it look like a drive-by shooting. Back in October, we actually have aerial footage of the scene at Memorial Miramar Hospital. The victims, Anthony Williams and Christopher Thomas Jr., were dropped off at the hospital where they were pronounced dead. October 26, 2018, at 4.35 a.m., Cortland Henry, a young rapper known by YNW Bortland, entered the emergency room at Memorial Miramar on 1701 Southwest 172nd Avenue, requesting assistance for two passengers in his vehicle. Medical staff would remove two passengers both unresponsive with multiple gunshot wounds. The vehicle, a 2018 Jeep Compass with Florida registration, number IEKD22, showed signs of an altercation riddled with bullet holes. The passenger, Anthony Williams, known as the rapper YNW Sack Chaser, removed from the front right passenger seat, had gunshot wounds to his torso and head, while the right rear passenger, Christopher Thomas Jr., known under the stage name YNW Juvie, had bullet wounds to his back and head. Staff would pronounce both deceased at the hospital. The driver, YNW Bortland, was questioned. An initial recounts of what led to the two deceased went as follows. They all departed a recording studio in Fort Lauderdale, driving on I-595 to the I-75 exiting at Miramar Parkway, heading west. The moment they drove past Southwest 106th Ave, Dykes Road, a vehicle pulled next to them and started shooting. Portland, realizing the danger, lowered his body position to the floorboard in a protective posture to avoid being shot. But when he got back up, his friends Juvie and Sack Chaser were noticed injured. But rewinding the two hours before the two lost their lives, the story was about to take a turn that would shock law personnel and the families of the deceased when the truth was discovered. October 25, 2018. YNW Juvie and YNW Sack Chaser woke up not knowing their lives would come to an end. They spent the day as they would any other day and later on arranged to meet up with who they considered their best friends, YNW Portland and the leader of their YNW group, Jamel Maurice Demons, known as the hip hop star, YNW Melly. The name YNW translated to young N-word world. Ain't nobody make it out of here. They dream, they stopped them in high school. Me and all my niggas, we had the same dream going up. A group of childhood friends that came together to make it out to a better life. The four go way back to childhood days overcoming the harsh realities of their environment to achieve their dream of success in the music industry. Their bond was strong, or at least that's what Juvie and Sack Chaser thought. But just hours before they were about to come together that night, they were unaware their bond would be tested. The night of October 25th came. The members of the crew arranged to drive to the New Era recording studio at 805 Northeast 4th Ave in Fort Lauderdale. After finishing up at the studio, they left in the early morning, October 26th, while it was still dark, confirmed by surveillance at the studio premises. All four entered the Jeep in a specific seating arrangement. YN Bortland was in the driver's seat. YNW Melly, located in the left rear passenger seat. YN Sack Chaser, in the right front passenger seat. And YNW Bortland, in the right rear passenger seat. At this point, unbeknownst to Juvie and Sack Chaser, something is strangely wrong. Their life is in grave danger, but by someone they'd never expect. Here's where the story of the final moments to their life stands at a crossroads. If following the scenario given by YNW Bortland, along their journey leaving the studio, a car pulled up and did a drive-by basically spraying up the vehicle, ending the lives of YNW Juvie and YNW Sack Chaser, while him and Melly escaped scot-free as Melly wasn't present in the vehicle. 
but after conducting their investigation given Bortland's story, detectives painted a far more sinister end to the duo. And this is where I'd imagine Juvie and Sack Chaser felt betrayed and totally confused as they took their final breaths. Using investigative technology, detectives were able to piece together the scene where the tragedy occurred. Portland, Melly, Juvie, and Sack Chaser, all in the vehicle. Something happened, whether argument, fallout, or simply the plan which Portland and Melly plotted all along was scheduled to be set in motion. Through mapping out the paths of the bullets, findings suggest that the trajectory of the bullets into the vehicle were inconsistent with the story of a drive-by. Instead, the images of the bullet's trajectory act as a proof of two things. One, the gunfire came from outside the vehicle, not from a moving one in a drive-by as Bortman stated. And two, the wounds that took Juvie and Sack Chaser's life were at close range and consistent with shots fired from where Melly was seated in the vehicle. The homicide now began turning from an outside hit to an inside job by their very own best friends. Recreating the scene, all four occupants were in the vehicle when it came to a halt at a specified location. Melly from the left rear passenger seat ended the lives of an unsuspecting juvie and sack chaser. Anthony Williams, known as YNW Sack Chaser, received bullet wounds through his neck, angled back to front, left to right, and upward along with wounds to his right shoulder and chest. Christopher Thomas Jr., known under stage name YNW Juvie, suffered bullet wounds entering the left side of his face, head, and back after he received a headshot and leaned to the left. Given the seating of the group when they left the studio, the scenario painted by the trajectory mapping held true. Autopsy results also revealed both Juvie and Sack Chaser had wound paths to their head from the left to the right direction, which contradicts Cortland Henry's drive-by scenario and supports YNW Melly as the one who ended his friend's lives. Now, this happened back in October. We actually have aerial footage of the scene at Memorial Miramar Hospital. The victims, Anthony Williams and Christopher Thomas Jr., were dropped off at the hospital where they were pronounced dead. The shooting actually took place in another location. Miramar police has not released where exactly this took place, but they say through forensic evidence, they were able to determine that this crime scene was staged. Now in the early hours before dawn on October 26, 2018, between 3.30 a.m. and 4.30 a.m., YNW Juvie and YNW Sack Chaser lie in a pool of cold blood, allegedly caused by someone they called friend and brother, YNW Melly, with the assistance of YNW Bortland. With so many inconsistencies in Bortland's story and the evidence from investigations and the autopsy, both Melly and Bortland were apprehended. Bortland was arrested on February 12, 2019, on two counts of first-degree hits. While a warrant was put out for Melly's arrest, who ultimately turned himself in on February 13, 2019, also charged with two counts of first-degree murder. Both are facing repercussions for fabricating a crime scene to mislead investigators in hiding the truth. Lauren, this Florida rapper YNW Melly, as well as another man, are being held here at the Broward County Jail this morning. They are each charged with two counts of first degree murder, and they're also accused of, as you said, staging this crime scene to appear as though it was a drive by shooting. The cover was blown, but YNW Melly and Bortland remained firm on their stance that it was indeed a drive by and they had nothing to do with the accusations being alleged upon them. Melly even went on to mourn his friends across social media and reaffirm his innocence to his fans. Investigators, however, was set on ensuring justice showed what they believe was the truth. Melly wasn't innocent in the shooting of his friends. More so, he was the one who did the gruesome deed. They enlisted the use of other methods to continue their analysis of what occurred. The trajectory mapping reenacted a clearer image of what actually happened, but there was no glass found from the shattered window in the vehicle. This is where authorities called in the help of the canine unit, who they used along with data from the phone locations to locate what they label as the real crime scene. 
There they found evidence fitting what they suspected. Officers would collect eight 40 caliber shell casings. The significance of this is that they found the same type of bullet on the floor at Melly's seat in a plastic bag. Along with the findings of the bullet casings, they found the location where they believe Melly and Bortland drove the vehicle to and staged the drive-by by standing outside and shooting into the vehicle. At the location, there were glass that matched the Jeep, both from the shattered front glass and back window. Being on T-Mobile, a network which allows various data to be collected, even as detailed as when someone is mobile or stationary, cops were able to gather all the information to connect the dots. Verifying time patterns and movement found in the phone tracking made possible by the network Melly used. The cell phone data was the piece of the investigation that broke down Bortland's original account of what happened to show that both him and Melly were allegedly conspiring together even after ending the lives of their friends. The cell phone data shows both Bortland and Melly around the area west of I-75 in Pembroke Pines at 4.25 a.m. Between then and the arrival of Bortland at the hospital at 4.35 a.m., Melly was dropped off from the vehicle at 4.32 a.m. What was even more relevant to the case was the analysis of the phone data showing both Bortland and Melly drove around for an amount of time with their friends lifeless in the vehicle, giving weight to the theory that they used that time to get their story straight. Technology was working to foil their plot, and one other critical piece of evidence was found due to surveillance footage at the studio and the hospital. Borland was viewed leaving the studio wearing a black t-shirt, but at the hospital, he arrived with something different, a black hoodie. The black hoodie was later examined and came up clean, but the black t-shirt the hoodie was covering underneath told investigators all they needed to know. What was found was a blood-stained pattern both on the front and back of the shirt. Due to the heinous nature of the charges, prosecutors sought for the capital punishment for YNW Melly as he allegedly committed two premeditated hits in a cold and calculated manner for financial gain. Since his arrest, he has been behind bars without bond awaiting trial. Recently, in July 2022, he had a small victory in his case with the capital punishment being dropped. However, it's a small victory for his legal team as the evidence against him continues to pile. This includes new findings and phone messages days after the shooting between YNW Melly and his girlfriend allegedly blaming him for Bortland getting dragged into the situation because he stood with him on the plot to end Juvie and Sack Chaser. Anthony Williams, formerly known as YNW Sack Chaser, and Christopher Thomas Jr., formerly known as YNW Juvie, met a tragic end, no matter if the jury believes Bortland and Melly's recollection of their passing or the prosecutors, which details them being murdered by people they thought were their brothers. Time and the strategy of Melly's defense will tell if his name, along with his friend Bortland, will be cleared or if their lives will be confined behind prison walls.